Social media is just a part of the culture we live in now. But just a few years ago, it was kind of hit and miss you. Some people lived on it, some people were nerds about it, some people could have lived without it. That's completely different now. And I thought I was going to be one of those people on the cusp of it until I happened upon the YouTube page of a guy called Walking Water. And he did a vlog, and I didn't know what vlog was, but it's kind of like where I felt figured it was an amalgamation of video and vlog. And so I watched a few of his entries, and it just kind of felt okay, it's another one of these young people oversharing. Until one day, he let the camera And 
wow. Yeah. And I was like, floored, stunned. So I, that's exactly what I did. I went back to school the following year. They nurtured me for about a year and um, educated me and um, enlightened me and took me into places I never thought I would ever go. They made me think outside my box um, because I was just thinking Florida. And they were like, have you ever been out of Florida? And you know, I'm just thinking a little bigger. They sent me to Interop and Arts Academy. Um, I studied, that's when my training took, went to another level. And um, I went to Interlochen for two years, my junior and senior year of high school. And then, by the grace of God, I auditioned for Juilliard with a few of the other dancers. Three of the dancers, the male dancers from Interlochen got in that year. Myself, Devon Rainey, Sam Jefferson. And we went together as brothers to Juilliard, and we were very happy and successful. I, I personally danced there for, um, for three years. Um, I seem to have this thing with school, I don't know, but I'm going to be honest, I, um, um, I failed my, for some reason, anatomy was, is, is a required, required class to get your BFA from Juilliard. And okay. um, that year, my junior year, um, I was, you know, doing some things I maybe shouldn't have done. And uh, I was slacking because I was kind of that kid where sometimes I knew teachers would just kind of help pass me along because, you know, I would study and I would do what I could, but I, you know, I, they knew I had a lot of potential to be intelligent, but just my, my focus was a little off and, you know, I was, I don't know, I was just kind of a weird kid. And I would try, but I guess I just didn't try hard enough. And I was hoping she was going to let me pass. <laughs> and she was like, no, boo, not this time. And she flunked my behind. And I went to you know, the, the meeting that we have um, between each semester. And they were like, Marcus, you can come back next year and get your diploma, but you won't be getting your BFA. Ooh. And um, I was like, I can't go to Columbia and you know, take anatomy? No. I can't take anatomy class over the summer? No. So I left. And I was petrified. Um, I didn't have a job. Wait, so let's pause on that, though. So there's a little boy in Florida who meets people who say, if you get yourself together, yeah. we will help you fulfill your dreams. Yeah. That takes you to one of the greatest in performing in Interlock, one of the best performing arts schools yes. in the country. That then takes you to Juilliard. Yes. Why wouldn't you get yourself together? Yeah. What, was, what was that rebellion about? Because that really is well, a theme that needs to be yeah. spoken to. Totally. Um, maybe in the past, I, I was able to, I, I made excuses. Maybe I made too many excuses, and I kept trying to find the loophole. Mm, and um, the rules were maintain a 3.0, no tattoos, no drugs, no alcohol. Now I go to Juilliard, they supported me my my freshman year, my sophomore year. Mm -hmm. I, I got a lot of scholarship, but anything that was, you know, they, they helped out well. Freshman year, I had an, an initiation party. I started drinking undercover. They didn't know about me. And, um, you know, I think they got the energy. I went away sophomore year, did a big job. I should have come back home with a lot of money. But instead, I was out there buying this jacket, and I was buying those pants. You know, I was enjoying my life, you know. I was spend I spent all my money. You enjoy your money. I was enjoying my money. Okay, let's be clear. <laughs> life, we all know. But you know you enjoy your money, right? I was. And um I came back and So wait, so second year at Juilliard, mm -hmm. you got a big job. What was that? Oh I did West Side Story. For me it was a big job. That's a big deal. I'm saying no, you, you can't skip over one of Broadway's most classic pieces that you get. In essentially your sophomore year of college. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was very excited. You know, and I toured. Um, we went to Italy, Lebanon, and Japan. And it was a whole summer thing. And I was surrounded with these perf awesome performers. And it was a new experience. I've never been outside the country. Um, so it was, it was different, you know. But at the end of the tour, I came back and they were like, so where's all that money? Right, right. You know, you thought you should have saved. And I was like, you know, that's my when, money, money. That's when the sponsorship went. And they 
were teaching me lessons that, you know, all right, you need it's time to get on your own feet. You're about that age. You're going to be able to take care of yourself. And even if you got to learn the hard way, you got to learn it. So that's what I had to do. And my junior year was hard. You know, but whatever. Um, not whatever. But, um, you know, I, I learned lessons and I continue to learn lessons. You know, every day is a lesson. Um, I'm just trying to be, I'm just trying to make up to them. Well, part of, I think, the process of the show is called Now What? It's like, so you hit this wall where the Now What moment is we're removing sponsorship because apparently the lesson now needs to be self, uh, self sufficiency and, and, and kind of governing your own resources. And I'm sure that was a hard lesson to learn and even harder trapped in the middle of New York where every distraction possible is there. So how did you make your way past the, we'll give you your diploma but not your BFA on to the rest of your life? Did you not take the class? And did you, how, did, how did you leave things with Julia before you went out into the world? Um, I left things in peace with them. I told them I was going to go ahead and not come back the following year um, because I wanted my BFA. I didn't want my diploma. Um, and I was very scared, and now I was angry at God. And um, I, I had a night where my mom always told me, talk to God like you're talking to your best friend. And it was the first night that I decided to think like that, and I had one of those nights where I was like, all right, God. And I threw some words at him that I promised you. God, that God could handle, I promise you. Well, he answered me. Okay. And um, okay. he... Um, he gave me a dream that night, and uh, I'm not going to tell you the dream, that's a whole other story, but at the end of the dream, I'm running, and um, like if this, is, if this is my room, I have a, I have a, my bed's on the floor, mattress on the floor, I have a mirror here, and my body is sleeping this way facing the mirror. Well, at the end of the dream, I'm running, and I just go like this, right? I'm running, and, and then I open my eyes, and I push up, and I look, I look in the mirror and I can see my sleeping body. And I'm just like, huh? Now the weird part is, I feel like me. Right. I feel like, but I see myself and I'm sleeping and I realize I'm not in my body. And it's never happened to me before in my life. And um, I, I, all of a sudden I'm frozen, I can't move. And I hear this, <clears throat> like somebody dropped a piano on the ceiling. In the mirror, in this corner, so it's in that corner, there's this orb about this big, and it's glowing, and it's like oozing, like, like, gack. And it's white, and it's oozing. And the, at this, so the sound goes boom, boom. This thing goes like this, boom, 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 boom. I can feel it, and I see it coming across the floor. It hits me. My body goes, I shoot into my body, my entire body goes like I stuck my finger in an electric socket. So that was the first thing where I was like, I called my mom, I was like, you know, I was like, come on, I'm just going Something happened, something happened. Something happened. <laughs> Seven days later, I had another dream. I got a phone call from a man, and um, he said, Marcus, um, uh, I didn't want to pick up the phone. And it was like, I felt like it was in the world. Everybody was running. And there were pillars, and um, I was outside of, I don't know, some, some big uh, establishment of a building. And I see my phone that says private, and I didn't want to pick it up, but I picked it up anyways, and I answered. It's this guy. He's like, <clears throat> Is this Mark Spellamy? And I said, Yes. He said, You can have everything your heart's ever desired, basically, but you have to turn around and go the other way. And I said, Okay. And he's like, Are you willing to do that? And I was like, yeah, you know, of course. And he's like, good, I'll complete the hinge. Now, for the dancers out there, I'm going to demonstrate. By the way, just quickly, I have a pair of underwear that says Envy. I got it from a friend. Don't, um, don't think that I'm the kind of person that would be. Calm down. So anyways, he, um, he was like, complete, um, complete the hinge. And a, a hinge in, in dance is like this. It's like, you, you hit this spot, it's like, Boom, you know? So, in my dream, it's like I had long hair and ponytail. He said, complete that hinge. He pulled me down to this hinge position, which was here. And at that moment, I hit the same electricity. And I 
was like, oh my gosh, I was like, it's happening again. And I was like, okay. He said, complete the hinge. I was like, just let it, let the feeling go through me. And that was it. It's, so that's, it never happened again. I've never experienced anything like that before in my life. And it's never happened again. It was a one time thing. I go, there's an audition. There are two auditions. One is for the color purple, and one is for a chorus line. And I'm like, God, I don't know, they're at the same time. Oh, okay. I'm like, God, I don't know which one to go to. I'm like, I don't know which one to go to, please help me. I'm praying throughout the morning, because I gotta make a decision which one I'm gonna go to this morning. And I'm going to the shower, and I go to the shower, and I go whoosh, to open the shower. We have a big purple shower curtain. Nothing, it's nothing but purple. Right. I was like, all right, I'm going to color purple. I was like, I guess that's my sign. I go to color purple, meet Donald Bird, dance, awesome audition. He books me, thank God. And um, from that audition, I meet Telsey and company. They're a casting agency. Telsey is like, you know, I guess they're like, who's this kid? They call me in for another audition for, for Tarzan. Um, Oh, come, come in and do this thing. I go in, have a great, you know, I was of the spirit, you know. I got that job. And this is where I was like, I don't have a job, God. I don't know what I got that job at the area workshop. Then, it was like when it rains, of course, in, the, in, like, in like two, three weeks, I got a call, go in, can you go in for this audition for Across the Universe? And I was like, okay, what are they looking for? They were like, they're looking for this called the Skeleton Group. So I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't really know what that was. I go to the audition. They're seeing people in groups. Out comes Solange Sandys from their previous group, Solange Sandys, Desmond Richardson, um, this, uh, I can't even see right now. John Sapia. Um, and I was like, what are these people doing at this audition? I'm about to go in. Andy Pellick's here. What am I doing? <laughs> And uh, I go in, and Dan Daniel Ezra was the choreographer, and he's like, <clears throat> oh, you know, um, hey guys, I just want to see you express yourself, you know, just, we're going to improvise. He's famous for making everything improvise. <clears throat> I'm like, okay, I'm like, God, I got, you know, just let me, so I'm going to lean against the wall, it's my turn to go, and instead of walking from the wall to here and then starting, I'm like, you know what, and I use the wall, and I push off, and I'm like, doing my thing, and float around. I got cast. They picked, I think it was, I think it was six or eight of us. And I'm in the skeleton crew with Desmond Richardson. And I mean, I'm just working with these people. And it's the first time I meet Julie Taylor. And I was just so blessed that year, you know? Like, I was, it, when it rained to pour, and I didn't have to worry about money. No, there was no issue, you know? But so did you? So, I didn't have to worry about money. I'm so blessed. Did you have to worry about Marcus? Because the last time Marcus got inundated with money, right. Marcus blew it. Right. So it's not the money that was the issue. Right. What lesson did you need to learn so that when you got you know, blessed this time, you didn't toss it out the window? Or was it because you were on your own mm -hmm. that the money already had places to be? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. How did you not mess this one up? Well, the Lord continued to bless me for a while, and um, he took me through one or two dry seasons, you know, and where he was like, you should have saved money. Right, because you still need to learn to save money. You're still playing around with money. Right, you know. Then he takes me to, you know, uh, he takes me to a couple different jobs, you know, jobs and jobs begin. I was working hard for about 10 years, about, it felt like 10 years. Maybe it was eight after school, but I think it was like eight, nine or ten years. I'm working hard doing jobs, and I should have saved money. But um, my lesson actually, I think, has, is, has just happened. I think I'm just getting, I think I'm just now at 31. I'm, I guess better late than never, but I'm just now learning that lesson. So, okay, so we'll come back to that, but I don't want to miss 
like the how we connected or how I connected to you in the middle of all of the success, but families in Florida or the life you grew up in in Florida, did you start blogging to kind of have mm. an outlet? Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean? so it, it, was it a way to speak mm -hmm. to your lonely and your disconnect and connect to somebody else? Or it what was, made you start blogging? Yeah, it was like uh, therapy, and um, I wanted to. Um, I also I I didn't want people to always just see me as like a sex symbol, and I wanted to talk about who I was as a person. <laughs> But you know, I'm just, that's just a cute. I, but that happens when you when you you're part of a generation that just lives a life in photographs. Only photographs. You're a dancer. You know, shows keep dancers in tight or naked. So people, oh my God, I love you. you no, know, you like my nakedness. And I and also as a kid, um, psychology was always something that fascinated me. So I wanted to be a psychologist when I was younger too. So I think it's taking that idea of how. I'm a Virgo, so we're analyzing. I don't know. Two days before Oh, yeah. September 6th. Okay. September 4th. Oh, sweet. Boom. Boom. Virgo's night. Um, but we do analyze. Yes, that may be true. Ah, ah, ah. Right? That's I mean, we're meticulous, so we could be surgeons. We mm -hmm. analyze mm -hmm. so well. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's what it was. Just the, the analyzation of life. And ah, I started asking questions okay. about okay. life. And I'm, through the videos, I'm looking for answers. So, you know, if it's from people or if it's from God sending me a message or what, you know, I'm just trying to understand why I'm here, like why we are here. And it's funny because, so I was telling Marcus that, um, I think I discovered you five, six years ago, and again, was dealing with this kind of young man and pouring his heart out and then pointing into your work too. And he's like, oh my God, you see, he's trying to say something. He's not just choreographing this Janet Jackson piece in the streets and trying to say something. But it feels like you're trying to say something different now. Because I, I remember seeing somebody say to you the other day when we were talking about opening your Bible. And they were like, stop trying to talk about something you don't even believe in. And all you've talked about in this interview is God. Mm -hmm. So where, where the shift. Yeah, where, what's been the shift from your mouth that perhaps people weren't seeing in your mm -hmm. energy before? What, what, has, what is the lesson? Now what? Well, you know how they say, oh, people only reach out to God when they need when they're, when they're in hell. Now, that happened to me. Um, now, I always was praying. God is a very present help in time of trouble. So that, hey, man. No, I mean, I always have talked to God. I've always, we've always been boys. Right. You know. Yeah, God, good. Right. Right. You know. It just so happens that I needed him. I needed him now. I had nothing and I needed the Lord. And before I wouldn't, you wouldn't, I, it's like I go through things, you know, it's like I went through a phase where I was nervous to talk about the Lord because it wasn't cool, you know, like, or I would even sometimes be embarrassed where what would Jesus do, sure, you know, because it, it's not cool these days to love the Lord, you know, these days it's cool to you know, worship other things or other... Or to speak a universal language about spirit and the universe. Yeah, you know, like, mm. And I got into that a little bit, you know, because I felt like I was safe there. But the truth is, like, I, it started slow for me. It's not, and, you know, I'm not trying to be like a preacher or anything, but, the, but, you know, God has always been there. And I just started opening up to my, my truth. You know, embarrassed or not, like I was like, you know what? I am a man of the Lord, and I do love the Lord, and I'm not embarrassed of it anymore. And you know, there are, I am gonna have friends that might think I'm not as cool, right, or right, 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 whatever. But you know what? Where were they when I needed help? They weren't. And I need help, and God is here right now, and, and He is really helping me out. He is helping me out, and you're not. So let me give Him some praise. Let me give Him some glory. Let me say His name. Because I am thankful. So I love Jesus Christ. I love Jehovah. Um, I, now Jehovah, I, I, I've been saying that in the last couple of days. More Jehovah, the idea of Jehovah. Because so, uh, somebody asked me the other day, he was like, you know, his family are Jehovah's Witness, and he's like, well, you know, Jesus was the son, but Jehovah was his father, and I it, thought about that, and I was thinking about that, and I was like. Jesus and Jehovah are the same thing. You know, I still ask questions. But, but I mean, we're commissioned to, and it's how we get 
deeper and richer, richer relationship. I went through, so Virgo, mm -hmm. I went through that same thing. And I was like, why do people keep trying to kill Jesus? Why do people keep praying to Jesus? Jesus came and did his assignment. Now, you know, what he left us with was the ability to do it ourselves. The ability to talk to God directly. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Tishka, Jehovah Nisa. Yeah. Why aren't you talking directly to God? Yeah. You want Jesus to stay on the cross and be like, Psst, tell Daddy I'm in trouble. Right. Psst, tell me, let me let's go. Hey, God, I'm in trouble. Right. You know? And so it's, 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 a, it's the conversation that keeps giving because if you can talk to God in trouble, then the scripture that says he's a very present help in trouble. Lo, I am with you, even mm -hmm. till the ends of the earth. You can't get so low that I'm not with you. Mm -hmm. So that, it, like you said, it makes you engage even when it makes you engage when you get two jobs in the same week, and it makes you engage when you don't get two jobs in the same week. And so it's like, all right, God, you know what I need, mm -hmm. and these weren't it. So however you're going to bless me, got it. Mm -hmm. So because we talk about people um, thinking we only go to God when we're in trouble. Uh, I was supposed to be on the flight with Aaliyah that um, that killed them in Abaco, but I was going to preach in Baltimore. And so um, the young lady who also perished with Regina Smith, I speak your name, you know, asked me, you know, so can we put you on a separate plane? Because I know, and I, and I was like, I'm not shooting on the plane. I'm okay with it. You know, I understand that they need their space, and, you know, so I wish them peace. And um, so I got on a plane early that afternoon, and by the time I landed in Miami, people I had just spent a whole week with were dead. And then 18 days later, um, when, my, when we go for the funeral and all that stuff, my boss was like, are you ready to go back to work? And I was like, yes. So she has me do two access credits in LA. The night before, she makes me pause because the flight that um, the, the travel department has booked me, I was leaving out of Newark and I live in Harlem. So she's like, let me change this. This is ridiculous for you to have to go all the way through the city. And so she takes me off that flight and puts me on the flight out of LaGuardia. And the flight she took me off of hit Tower 2. Wow. And so that's 18 days apart. And then all of a sudden I leave BET. Six months later, and I'm a pastor. People are like, see, there you go again. People who turn to God. I was like, no, no, I can provide a pastor in January. Right. And you know, then Aaliyah, mm -hmm. then September 11th. And I was like, if you want to see the enemy loose, mm -hmm. when I said, even in the middle of all this glamour, I'll give my life and whole heart to God, mm -hmm. like, then I'll take this as my first job. Mm -hmm. This BET thing is, is a hobby, you know, mm -hmm. a second job. And then, it, you, know, mm -hmm. you know, people see that. It's like when you really begin to speak in authority, mm -hmm. that's when stuff comes after you. Mm -hmm. And so let's talk about that because that's what you've been doing lately. You're mm -hmm. saying, I'm going to use social media now yes. as, 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 yes. to claim an audience. And now you're saying, like, God, let's talk about the video where you just told the truth about your drug use over yeah. the course of yeah. you know, of your young young adult life. Yeah. Well, uh, I opened uh, I, I did it for a couple of reasons. Okay. Um, I opened up to first was I and uh, some people have told me, oh, you should not have done that. I told my mom to start. Um, I was on, you know, on that the same day with the where I got a Bell's palsy. I called my mom and I was about to get on the flight and um, and I just, you know, my spirit was just so dirty right now and I just mm -hmm. just felt filthy and I, and I was like, mom, and I got a problem. And she was like, son, and I told my mom, and I wanted to relieve the weight from her. I didn't want her to just be the one that knew anymore because mm. she'd been walking around with this weight. People wondering what's wrong with me, what's going on with her son. And she, I didn't want her to tell anyone. I was like, please don't tell anyone, you know. And so she'd been walking around praying for me with so much weight. Like, my son, and she wanted her son back, and I wanted... I wanted to give her son back. I wanted to be back for her. So, and then, and then so one of the reasons was to take the weight off my mom's heart. Yeah, and so that she could talk to other people about it now. She could feel free. And um, one reason. Now, and then I told another uh, close friend, and he said, well, Marcus, you know, you've done it. You know, now the damage is done, you know, because, you know, this stuff can affect me later. He's like, the damage is done. What have you learned from it? And I said, well, you know, one day hopefully I'll be able to help people, you know, that have gone through it. I said, but I have to wait. I said, I have to wait until I get over it. I have to wait until I conquer it to, to tell people so that, you know, they can understand. Now, the next day I was thinking about that statement. I was like, you know what? I was like, I could die tomorrow. I could die today. And if that happened, I never would have helped anybody. That story never would have gotten out. I never would have been able to, to help. 
So I was like, you know what? There was also uh, there was a uh, an actor, a dancer who had told people about his heroin addiction. Joe Hutton, something. Joe something. Oh, Hutton. Oh, Hutton. Oh, he was on. You know, and he was he told everyone about how he was addicted to heroin. I didn't really read the story, but just that simple fact that he came out and and and, and came clean, and he seems to be different, to change now. He released it, brother. You said he released it. Yeah. I was like, you know, so he he was a little bit of that inspiration too. Okay. And um, I was like, you know what, Marcus, <clears throat> you can really help somebody. And um, and also, I another reason I told is because I figured if <clears throat> well, one, I knew people were wondering where I disappeared and why. So I wanted to let them know and why I might have looked different. I wanted to be honest and be like, look, this is what was up. This is what I was doing. And I had a problem. And and also I figured if I told on myself and if the video was out there, then now um, I can, like the next time it comes up, I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh, boo, I made that video. And now I got people knowing what I've done. And if I come around looking like whatever next time, they're going to know what it is. So I'm not doing that anymore. So it was like my way of keeping myself away from it. The video was like, yeah. Yourself you know, and also once I did it, and I realized that it was helping people, oh, it was so freeing. Like I felt free. Like I felt, and also, also I was crying earlier that morning because I realized I was delivered from it. Like I was like, I felt delivered when before I made that video, and I was like, my spirit felt like I was changed. Like I was, I finally saw my face. I was back. Like I felt like I was back to me, and I was so thankful. So. You know, it was in all of that that I was like, you know what? It's time to tell the truth. Okay. So, now what? So now the secret's out. Mom is released from carrying the weight. You are back. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about, you know, Pat patiently working on a one-man show. Mm -hmm. You've traveled the world. You've done Broadway. You, you know, you, and you're just 31. Now what? What is it? dancer at 31 who's been through all you've been through and already had the successes you've had do now what is the passion in your heart what's the work on your on your plate now um i i, I used to a friend said oh you got bit by the fame book <laughs> a long time ago i thought i wanted to be famous but really nowadays fame comes with a whole bunch of stuff i don't want you got people following you around the cameras getting you doing stuff that he doesn't, people don't need to know about. It's just being ridiculous, it's just ridiculous. You're like, fame nowadays, and nowadays you ain't gotta even have talent to be famous, you know, whatever, but it's just that, it's just that, I, so I don't, I don't wanna be famous. I wanna do, I wanna do great things, I wanna do big things, I wanna meet awesome people, I just, I just want to, I just want to do great things, and I know that 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 leads to other things. But I just want to do great things. I want to be inspiring people, and um, I'm putting my footsteps, I'm putting my hands, I'm putting my eyes on the Lord right now. I'm putting my period. I need to keep remembering that God is the one that put me here, and I am nothing without the Lord, and I can do anything with Him by my side. So. And, and, and if I'm supposed to, maybe he's going to do something and change my focus. And maybe I, I will become a preacher one day. You know, I don't know. But all I know is I want to go forward in a positive direction with my heart open, with my mind open. And I want to receive whatever he has to offer. You know? So, I wonder, before I say this as we close, tell me where Walking Water came from. I was doing Across the Universe. And I was dancing, and um, this girl, uh, she was PA. I'm, I'm, I feel horrible because I do not remember her name. She said to me, you're, you're so beautiful when you move. You're like, you're like walking water. And I was like, huh? She was like, you know, you move like, like water. You're like walking water. And I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, I've always wanted to find a name for my company, you know, like a dance company. I was like, thank you so much. I told her, I was like, thank you so much. 
And I remember before I, this, before I did this interview, I wanted to, I was going to, I told myself, oh, you need to email and ask, get her name. Um, maybe, you know, by then. You'll I tell me I'm going to it. Yeah. I got a good picture of her or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. She, it's all her. She was like, you look like water when you move. You look like walking water. And so I, I said, I'm going to name my company. If I ever have one, I'm going to name it Walking Water. And I took that name and I've, I've just continued with it. So, What's beautiful in this moment about that title, um, because as a dancer, I would have thought, yeah, that must be it, the fluidity of it. But where my spirit is being led to push you today is the story of Jesus on water. And, and, uh, and Peter saying to him, if that's you, bid me to come. And that you are in this place where God is telling you, it's me, come. You've gone from walking water to walking on it, not walking as it. And you've got some stuff to do that will use all the gifts that you have and stuff that you don't believe that you're worthy of doing. But great things are about to happen for you because of this yes. So thank you for this. Thank you because um, I don't even know if you knew I was a pastor in this conversation, but this is really great if I'm not. And a Virgo too? What? They time to kill my brother and I couldn't stop it. Dream schemes and multi-rockets.